Hey everyone, you're watching Agile Coder. In this video, I'll show you how to set up an NX workspace. Along with it, we'll see how to set up React apps and a shared UI library that can be shared by multiple React apps in the workspace. So let's get started. Welcome back. Before moving into setting up the workspace, we need to have Node installed. And yeah, that's pretty much it for your requirement. So you can download and install Node.js from its official website, which is nodejs.org. I'll also place a link in the description. You can check that from there as well. Let me give you a brief about what we are trying to accomplish in this video. First, we'll see how to set up an NX workspace and along with it, how to set up a React app. And then we'll create a shared UI library that is independent of our project. And this shared UI can be used by multiple apps for example, multiple React apps. And this shared UI library will have its own lint, own test, and same goes for React apps as well. So in this way, we'll be able to manage our component library once, and this can be used by multiple apps. And we don't have to worry about testing and all because it will be having its own testing environment. And, and then we'll create another React app and we'll use the uh, shared UI library created earlier. And then we'll see how to check the dependency graph. NX gives commands and tools to check dependency graph between your apps and libraries so you can decide the build process and take your decisions. And then finally, we'll check out some more commands from NX. And yeah, that will be it for this video. So let's get our first objective going. That is creating a workspace along with it a react app so let me just quickly create a folder here uh, let's just say nx demo we'll open it in my terminal real quick i'm using warp here you can use whatever so the command to generate a workspace is npx create nx workspace at latest and this dot means you have uh, you want to create the workspace inside the current directory that's it now this will give us prompts about setting up various kinds of projects in the workspace. For example, we can set up a React project, a Vue project, an Angular project, or a Node project. So let's go with the React one. And uh, you can choose frameworks from here, but I'll go with none, which is this vanilla React.js. And here you have two options, basically. So let's say you are planning to have multiple React apps inside this workspace and you have to go with the integrated monorepo setup so monorepo is nothing but like maintaining all of your code base all of your projects basically in inside one repository standalone is just a single project where you want nx capabilities of maintaining and handling dependencies so we'll go with the integrated monorepo and let's say i'm giving this uh, as app one basically this is the name of our application and yeah we'll also have option to choose the bundler basically so like wheat is the popular going on right here well, let's just go with white and for end-to-end -end testing let's just not choose anything as of now and yeah here you can choose your style sheet format so i'll go with tailwind because that's my favorite and for the ci let's just do it later because that's not um setting up ci is going out of the scope of this video yeah let's just go and do it later you can opt for it it will shave your dependencies in a remote cache so that the fetching of this dependencies during your build process in some ci pipelines would be like faster than normal but right now i don't want to opt for it yeah, that's it. Now, what this will do is create a workspace for us. And workspace is nothing but monorepo because we have uh, selected this integrated monorepo project setup. And inside it, we'll have a application, a React application with Vite setup already. I will show you in a minute that we will get all the basic uh, setup for React project. For example, ESLint TypeScript is built in, then uh, Tailwind will be configured already. And yeah, just will also be configured by default when we create an uh, application using an X. So let's just wait for a second. By the way, you just don't have to wait. I can skip it for you. There we go. Now let's just open it in VS Code. 
Okay, so this is the setup that you get. And under apps, we'll have our app one that we created. It's a React app, you can see. So this has a little uh, different directory structure than uh, the problem you might have been used to of with the create react app but for the ones who you who have used wheat this might feel similar with the main.txs and all these stuffs so so this is it like we've our workspace setup with react app uh, and we can you know check nx show project app one this is a command to check all the commands available for our app what this command is doing is it is creating a development server where we can check all the commands that are available for a specific project for our case this is app1 npx app1 build so this is the command and click on it you can copy the command from here you can use this command for build so basically let me give you the basic syntax of this uh, uh, running commands for each application so you have to go something like this nx then um, run and then the project name which is app1 in this case and then we can run all these commands which is build lint preview serve substatic test and some more commands if you like to this uh, you know define it by yourself this is the thing let's see I want to test lint so this is how you do it and there is another syntax format, so let's just see nx test app one. Even uh, you can do this. This will run our tests, and yeah, that's it for the React app. So let's just do some more configurations. Let's say in the app, I will, you know, I'll remove. Let's just up the server for a moment. nx serve app one, and. This is the default template given by Annex. So, uh, so you can see this is giving us hello app one. So in this way, we'll know uh, like we are running the app one. So I don't want to uh, do any you know development in this apps right now. So I want to show you the next thing on our objective. Or let's just say we want to create another React application in here. Let me open another terminal. So Annex G Annex React. I don't want to. Uh, create a library right now. So uh, this is nxg nx react app. We want it to be created inside apps directory and let's just say app 2 and Here it will ask me some libraries to install. I want none for end-to-end -end testing and as you can see I while I created this workspace I had chose the bundler is white so like this project will also be inherit that property unless I'm stating it um, like giving this command as white as some RSpec or Webpack something else unless I'm specifying it it will use a white by default so that's how we create another app so we can check that out inside apps we have two apps right now so uh, let's say I want to up the and one more thing like uh, after you generate or you know make some significant changes it fails to you know reset the local cache so we can uh, we have to explicitly do it using this command nx reset so what this will do is it will you know uh, reset the cache inside so basically we have dot nx here and inside we have cache so this is used by nx internally to you know speed things up so when we do a significant change in our application in our workspace specifically but let's say we are adding a new application or a library then we sometimes or even a dependency then we sometimes need to run this command this nx reset uh, so that we can clean the cache and yeah so let's say i want to run the app 2 so we can do this uh, simple as this nx serve app 2 so this will run my app 2 and let's also start the app one nx serve app one so this is how you run multiple apps inside the same repository so this is how you create multiple apps react apps basically and you can see there is uh, this uh, global dependency management so uh, let's say there are some of the packages that you need in both the application then these dependencies will be managed globally so you don't have to repeat yourself uh, well uh, you know and uh, let's say let's just say i want to create a uh, react library 
UI library basically so we can do that let's say nx g at nx slash react then library lib shared ui so let's just go with this thing so what this will do is it will create a new directory here in the root called libs because we are specifying it and we are specifying here it's a react library and the name of the library is shared ui that's all right we can create this and it will ask me for you know the test runner so basically we are we might be already using Jess here because it comes pre-configured with you know when you define uh, when you create a new project in NX so uh, Jest is already you know configured for app 1 and app 2 so let's just go with Jest in the shared UI as well you can go with Vitest as well there there is no issue in there so let's just go with Jest and here this is the bundler so we've been using bundler white for the apps so we can go with white for this shared UI as well and that's it like you can create your shared UI library just like that uh, we have this library here and here uh, you can let's say this is your library and it will also be using stay using tailwind because we defined style format for our workspace as tailwind globally and uh you will you will be having spec files in here as well for the shared ui so you don't have to worry about this in your individual applications you just want uh, test once in your library and that's it you can use that library in all of your apps and then you have to you know export uh, in the index file let's just remove this and shared component uh, let me create a component here and for the spec file base element to be truly really, okay it's all uh, it's just importing and checking if it is uh, getting rendered so that's how you run tests for your shared ui and also the same goes uh, for the linked as well and one more thing i want to point out is that you in the workspace you have a global jest config a ts config and this package.json so uh, whatever uh, dependencies you will be installing in your uh, in either of these apps or libraries it will be listed here because you will have a global dependency management here and this ts typescript configuration uh, this is the base config and all of these apps and libraries will inherit these properties by default and you can you know override them in this uh, like each of these apps and libraries will have their own config uh, like these are categorized I mean organized into three files basically this is TS config JSON um, it is basically using two other config files which is one for library and one for spec which is for you know testing environments tests basically so and the same goes with this app one and app two as well because they have their individual configuration files as well yeah that's it that's the basic uh, like setup of applications and a ui library in here so let's just do it one thing one more thing like uh, use the shared ui that we've created which is basically you know uh, a shared component i spell it wrong so these are components that I want to use in app 1 and as well as in app 2. So first thing we can do is default uh, as a shared component. Okay. And from here we can, you know, import and export the components. Lib shared UI. That's it. Okay, let's just import the shared component that we have created in both this application and let's see if that works. So right now we have a shared UI library and uh, package.json for this is here. So uh, let's just do it this way. So uh, when we will import the components, we'll import it from at shared UI and that should resolve to this uh, the path for this library so we can set that up in TS config so as you can see this is the namespace basically for the library we can do it as this shared UI and this will point to library shared UI src index.ts that's it so now let's go to our app app1 app.tsx and here we'll remove this so let's just import it shared component yeah that's it it's going to get imported from shared UI and let's say you want to add another component 
which is let's say component two dot esx which will we'll just leave it like that and we'll do the same thing for the component two as well we need to import it in here and then export it which is yeah that seems right and let's just use this component two in the app two this app two main dot app dot tsx is this thing so let's just remove all these things so let's just import the component too, right? So there it is. And let's just import the other shared component as well. So that is how it works. So this is how you import all your components from shared UI. So now that we have imported all our components in the apps, app one is running on 4200 and app two is running on 4201. Yeah, there is, there we go. We have the both components here. So there is something called an X depth check, depth graph actually. So what this will do is, let's say I'm clicking on it app one so it will give me uh let's say shared ui okay this is the graph basically we have two apps app one and app two which is dependent on shared ui so let's say in future you are making you know tens of libraries and apps then this command right here can give you a lot of insight of what's going on in your workspace so this is one thing we have tasks as well which will give you this uh, commands as well so each of these have their build uh, now you can see this lint are independent of each other so you don't see any arrows between them so let's say I am going to this build so build will be dependent so that's why we are seeing this dependency arrows here between these apps and uh, you know this library so that's it that's pretty much it basically like um, like with this basic understanding if you are already familiar with react then uh, this mono repo setup is very much powerful in a in such a way that it can handle dependencies uh, and configuration files in a hierarchical level and this will you know ultimately help you to build your code base you know organized manner and in the same way you can have a global dependency management along with uh, logic management as well for example uh, in our case it was library a ui library in fact so that's pretty much it for this video if you have any questions and queries regarding this nx setup or you uh, run into any issues or you know, troubles then feel free to ask me in the comments i'll i would be glad to help you out yeah that's it for this video see you guys in the next one peace